Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. 5G cellular towers are steel structures that typically range from 100 to 400 feet in height that hold communications equipment. They provide the core mobile network coverage for wireless carriers to provide you 4G, LTE, and now 5G services. But did you know that cellular towers in the United States are largely controlled by three publicly traded companies that you probably have not heard much about? In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview and comparison of American Tower, Crown Castle, and SBA Communications, the three largest tower companies in the United States. Additionally, we walk you through the equipment that is owned by the tower company versus the equipment that is owned by the carrier, which are companies like Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. After this video, you will understand who is building out the digital infrastructure to support the 5G network that we are using today. So stay tuned and I will break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. So first is American Tower. American Tower trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker AMT. American Tower owns 40,600 towers in the United States, which represents 23% of the company's total of 179,000 towers globally. Second is Crown Castle, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker CCI. Crown Castle owns 40,100 towers in the United States, which represents 100% of the company's total because Crown Castle does not operate internationally. Third is SBA Communications, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker SBAC. SBA Communications owns 16,500 towers in the United States, which represents 50% of the company's total of 32,700 towers globally. So as seen in the video, Crown Castle's towers are the most urban. Crown Castle has the highest percentage of suburban and urban towers relative to its peers American Tower and SBA Communications. Specifically, 62% of Crown Castle's towers are located in the top 100 cities in the United States, as compared to American Tower at 45% of the top 100 cities and SBA Communications at 43% of the top 100 cities. Examples of these cities being New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Houston. In other words, Crown Castle's towers are located in more urban and suburban environments as opposed to rural environments, which American Tower and SBA Communications are more skewed towards. In terms of countries of operation, American Tower operates in 20 different countries around the world. Notably, the company's six largest markets by number of towers are the United States, India, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and Nigeria. Moving to Crown Castle, which only operates in the United States and has publicly stated that it is currently not interested in expanding internationally. Finally, SBA Communications operates in 10 different markets. The company's significant markets include the United States, Brazil, and South Africa. So let's discuss some of the key tenants of these tower companies. A tower company's customer base is primarily the largest wireless carriers in the countries that they operate in. Even though these tower companies operate outside the United States, the US carriers still comprise the majority of their revenue overall. American Tower's three largest tenants are AT&T at 19% of its revenues, T-Mobile at 18% of its revenues, and Verizon at 14% of its revenues. Crown Castle's three largest tenants are again T-Mobile at 35% of its revenues, AT&T at 22% of its revenues, and Verizon at 18% of its revenues. Finally, SPA Communications has the same three tenants, with its three largest tenants being T-Mobile at 40% of its revenues, AT&T at 32% of its revenues, and Verizon at 19% of its revenues. So moving to tenants per tower, and we look at this on a United States basis only. So overall, the United States has 154,000 towers, with an overall tenancy ratio of 2.3 times. 
This means that there are 354,000 tenants on those 154,000 towers. These three tower companies host a significant portion of all the tenants in the United States. Specifically, American Tower has a 2.6 times tenancy ratio, equating to 106,000 tenants on its 40,600 towers in the United States. Crown Castle has a 2.1 times tenancy ratio, equating to 84,000 tenants on its 40,100 towers in the United States. SBA Communications has a 2.1 times tenancy ratio, equating to 35,000 tenants on its 16,500 towers in the United States. So one thing to note is that with tenancy ratios above two times on average, this means that many of these tower companies have two to three tenants on each of their towers. In turn, what this really means is that a combination of AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile all place their equipment on the same towers, since they are all the primary tenants of these tower companies in the United States. Finally, at DGTL Infra, we cover all four sectors of digital infrastructure. And indeed, these tower companies also have part of their operations in adjacent sectors of digital infrastructure. Recall that the four sectors of digital infrastructure include towers, data centers, fiber, and the combination of small cells and distributed antenna systems. In addition to towers, American Tower owns 1,774 distributed antenna system networks, also known as DAS networks. Specifically, 407 of these DAS sites are in the United States, 1,079 of these DAS sites are in India, and 231 of these DAS sites are in Latin America, with the remainder being in Africa and Europe. Moving to Crown Castle, in addition to towers, Crown Castle also owns 80,000 route miles of fiber and approximately 48,000 small cells which are on air currently. Finally, moving to SPA Communications, they really own no material assets in these other sectors. SBA is really the most pure play tower company of the three. So a question we get a lot at DGTL Infra is what does the carrier own and what does the tower company own? So while the tower asset may seem like a simple steel structure that is owned by the three previously mentioned tower companies, it is actually a bit more complex. It is important to understand that a cellular tower consists of both active and passive infrastructure. A carrier like Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile owns the active infrastructure, whereas a tower company like American Tower, Crown Castle, and SBA Communications owns the passive infrastructure. Let's walk through some of the distinctions between the two types of infrastructure now, using American Tower and Verizon as our examples. So tower sites operated by a tower company, think American Tower, tend to be macro sites which are large physical towers independent of a building housing what are known as macro cells. The tower company, American Tower, typically has ownership of the physical infrastructure of the tower site, including the land and any ground leases that come with it, the physical tower, excluding any electronics and cabling, on-site shelters for equipment such as baseband units, and the provision of energy access to the sites, including a backup generator for fail-safe operation. The carrier, in this case Verizon, will lease space at a site to place its electronic equipment, such as antennas and baseband, and this will include a contract for power to the site. The tower company, American Tower, leases space on these towers to the carrier, Verizon, through a long-term agreement, think 10 to 15 years for hosting their equipment at the site. The site rentals consist of providing carriers like Verizon, which are tenants of the tower, vertical space on the tower, and portions of the land underneath the tower to house their equipment. In summary, American Tower takes care of what is called the passive infrastructure component, while Verizon owns and manages the active infrastructure. Let's show you specifically what is defined as passive and active infrastructure through this diagram on the video now. So active infrastructure owned by the carrier is signified by the pink color on this page and includes labels number one through four depicted on the tower, which are the tower antenna. 
label number 5, which is marked on the tower, is the radio link or transport mechanism. Label number 6 shown on the tower is the feeder, which usually takes the form of coaxial cable. Moving to passive infrastructure, which is owned by the tower company, that is signified by the dark blue color on this page and includes label number 7 depicted on the tower, which is the mast, label number 8 marked on the tower, which are the shelters, label number 9 shown on the tower, which is the generator, and there can often be more than one of these. And finally, label number 10 depicted on the tower, which is the land and ground below the tower. On the right of the video, we have highlighted some more specific examples for both active and passive infrastructure so that you can become more familiar with what precisely constitutes each type of infrastructure. So hopefully you found this video on towers helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful and consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. At dgtlinfra.com, we cover the latest developments of American Tower, Crown Castle, and SBA Communications, with articles on topics such as American Tower's recent $3.5 billion purchase of Insight Wireless. So with that, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me which of the three tower companies you are most interested to learn about. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.